G'day everyone, welcome to the Hook, Line and Sinker YouTube channel where we go about uh, revisiting some of the project boats that we have done over the uh, the course of our fishing show Hardy over the last sort of 10 or 12 years I guess and um, the one particular thing we're looking at now yes. is a project that we call Living in the 70s. Yes. Um, it's actually two project boats in actual fact. It is indeed. Um, the last instalment, if you, if you didn't see that, maybe go back and watch this from the beginning. Don't have um, to. They don't have to, no. You can just watch this one. But yeah. um, we, we have decided to do our project boats this time around based on Yamaha's, at the time, brand new lightweight 70 horsepower four stroke engine. And in doing so, we've sort of gone our separate ways. Well, that's right. You spat the goo and wouldn't allow me to buy uh, an old crappy second hand boat. And you said, I want a new boat because I like new stuff and new <laughs> millennial sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I want it all new and shiny, yeah. brand new. And you said, no, I'm going to go to the trading post of the classifieds and I'm going to buy <laughs> some other piece of junk that I love no. I do so um, often. No, today, um, and <laughs> Well done on finding this video because today the wraps come off um, a time capsule, literally a time capsule in 1994. So it was pretty new for you, wasn't it? Pretty new. <laughs> it's sort of a new boat for you. Um, it was a Kevlar cat, wasn't it? What was Dominator. it? Dominator. Dominator. Five metre Dominator. Beautiful boat. <laughs> um, so safe. And anyway, today we take Drew for a ride in the Dominator. All right, exciting times because for the first time, I get to get my first look at whatever boat Nick has chosen and he has been going on and on about it without giving too much away. I'm not sure what type of boat it is, but I've been told to meet him here at the boat ramp and we're gonna put it in the water and see how it goes. So hopefully he'll turn up shortly. What on earth is that? What on earth is that thing? This is Nick's new project boat, which I'm yet to lay eyes on. Uh, we're about to put it in the water and take it out. He's been going on and on about it, how big it is, how much of a family cruiser it is. Well, that's my first look at it. What is it? What on earth? Good grief. It's got two motors on it. Yep, two motors. 70 horsepower becomes 140 horsepower. I'm not sure that was in the rules. It's got two hulls. It's it a little cat. What they call in the business, Andrew, a catamaran. <laughs> and uh, as is well known by every search and rescue organization in the country. Terrible boats, little catamarans, aren't this they? Shocking. is the end of the story as far as little boats go. This is the most seaworthy boat built search in and Australia. Rescue, well, are you saying, you, saying that the people in the search and rescue game don't know what they're talking about? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't want to say that on camera, Nick, but they are called Dad's Army. Did you buy this from a search and rescue person? Uh, I've got a saying, Hardy, if it's not a cat, it's a dog. It's green. It's lime green. <laughs> spearmint. It's spearmint green. <laughs> nice. And it's got those graphics on the side. Nice. <laughs> Not. Let's get it in the water. I've got to take the covers off. Yes, you do. It's in pristine condition, Andrew. Pristine. Something How you many covers do. does it come with? Uh, it come with the covers or did you just get those <laughs> to... Get into your dad's army roll. Look at that, as if it's new. Now, could you just fold that up for me, please? Take this one off as well. There is 140 horsepower. Awesome. So we're going to be replacing those with the new 70. Yep. This will give us an those excellent... Those look new. Yeah. Well, that's the way I tend to look after things. <laughs> It's been fastidiously maintained, the Dominator. Oh, look at it. It's just a bit crap, isn't it? Well, can you help me? <laughs> uh, no, I, don't, I wouldn't like to get in the way. You're going <laughs> to yeah. do this every time you go boating? Yes, part of it. 
Part of the thrill, each day, it's like Christmas, each day you get to unwrap it. Oh no, that's all gone down on the ground in the puddle. Oh, more green this side, nice. And the chairs are green. If there is green inside, yes. That's so it's high vis. In a search and rescue situation, you want the people who you're rescuing to be able to see you clearly. You're not a search and rescue officer, you know Said that. you. Oh, this is all pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's a bit of a toy, your boat. Well, mate, at least it's not a little baby tinny dish. This, you can chop it up with a chainsaw and, and it, it would sit. still float. No, it would sit. Full foam flotation. Unsinkable. Let's chop it up with a chainsaw and see. Hang on, I'm gonna fold this up. All right. Cool. Like, I'll get better at that. That was easy. All part of a day's boating when lives are on the line. Careful. Careful. Steady. We're going to start the starboard engine. Port engine. Both engines are go. Why do you talk like that? Why are you talking like an idiot? You're not. Let fine. me go. Let me off. I can't. I'm ready to go to sea. I'm not getting wet. There could Look, be someone the who is rescuing. Can you hear me? Over the boy. The noise. See this door here? Yes, roger that, rescue service. Yeah, roger that. <laughs> Green Dragon, ready to go. It's not on. What? Your radio's not on. No, I was just practicing. Let it off. No, I can't. Come on. I'm not getting wet for it. Look at that, that's easy buddy, isn't it, with that door? Save me getting wet. It's got quite a few chains on it too there that I noticed you put on. Part of the boating thing. Mate, I'm not getting my feet wet for any cat. No way. This is part of the boating conversation. Person on the boat does all the boat stuff. It's a cold. Person in the car. It's a cold awesome. day. Right, right, I'll just drag it out a bit then, will I? Hang on, I've got the engines no, down. Right. Don't do that. Shut down port engine. Shut down starboard engine. All right, stop. What are you doing? I mean, how many chains does it take to make two it chains. secure? Two chains for security. Older security, two engines. <sighs> two hulls. Two of everything. Backup. Redundant system. That looks easy. Okay, it's clear. Yes. So take a shot. Well, what you got here, Hardy, is a... A catastrophe, uh, Nick, a catastrophe. I've got catitude. <laughs> what we've got is a five metre Dominator cat, uh, built in 1994, yes. I think. Um, twin 72 stroke yammies, 
in excellent condition. It's self-draining deck. Yes. Plumbed live bait tank. Well, that's not good for the family. You wanted a family um, cruising boat. Uh, they don't care about a live boat tank or a self-draining deck. 200 litres, 100 litres each side, separate fuel tanks. So if you happen to get contaminated fuel, uh, you'll probably be right on one motor. You know, there are backup systems. But if you everything, fill it up from the same Everything spot. is duplicated. Twin batteries up off the floor, green cushions, etc. And best of all, it's like, well, it's like a magic carpet. Ah! Oh. Oh, I don't like it. It feels like it's going to flip any minute. That's what sort it of does, doesn't it? Yes. Nick's been kind enough to let me have a drive of uh, what I call catastrophe. And gotta be honest, after you get over the initial feel of a cat, and it is a, it's a very different feel when you're used to monohull boats, and you get over the initial fear that it's going to in fact flip over and toss you out, and you learn to trim the cat, it seems to go along very, very well. For a five metre boat, we're out in a bit of slop, and it goes fine, it goes quite well. It's a long ride, does it? It flies the cat. Look at it. The little boat, it's unbelievable. Now, Hardy was saying we don't have a lot of cat experience, and that's true, and also we don't have a lot of two-stroke experience. These Yemi two-strokes are in good nick, and they go fine. So we will get our man from Yamaha to come and run the numbers on the cat to see how much fuel and noise it makes with that two track before we do the big revamp with the brand new four stroke F70. So, uh, like a magic carpet, really. I was riding on a magic carpet, they were just a fabulous boat. Um, now, there wasn't much I could do. I'd sort of paid my money, and um, you know, we've, we've well, got a bit of a design, and it's, going, it's getting built. So, there's not that much I can do at this point in time. Um, but you, oh heaps! You're just boating. Heaps, and I got a magic carpet ride. Yeah. I did take the um, the Dominator out one day, and thinking that uh, it's a cat, and you know, be able to go through any sort of conditions. I took it out on a reasonably choppy day. Yeah. And if you if you couldn't get it going fast enough to you know to get the the sort of air effect under it, it was a pretty hard riding little boat, was my memory of it. But anyway, that's a different story. What we had to do was uh, harvest the engine data. So we got um, Gibbo from Yamaha, our mate Gibbo, to come down and uh, we ran the numbers on the mighty twin 72 strokes, um, which are interesting to compare when we put the four strokes on it. Got the tech heads from Yamaha down and we're about to do a data run on the little Dominator five metre cat. We're going to measure how much fuel it uses and how much noise it makes with its old two stroke motors before we rip them off and replace them with the brand new F70 four stroke. Everybody, this man here has followed through the fortunes of uh, last year's project boat, the Beast, and is back again. Glenn Gibson, welcome back to the show, mate. Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, today, well, first of all, let's talk about the Dominator, the 1994 Dominator. Have you ever seen a more pristine example? Surprisingly, this thing's in really good condition, and oh, these motors, 70 horsepower, not bad either. Uh, they came out of the factory uh, 16 years ago. They are as brand new, which is a testament to the uh, the engineers at Yamaha. 
But mate, what we're here to do today is to gather the information from these to then compare to the new F70. Yeah, that's right. We want to really see the difference between, for what particularly range, we want to see the range between what the two-stroke, how quickly they can get us there, to how much fuel they're going to burn, yep. compared to the new four-stroke technology, how quickly they'll get us there, and also how much fuel we're going to save. Now, I'm used to bigger outboards, and to me, these don't seem to use all that much fuel at all. Are we going to see much difference, do you reckon? Yeah, we are. But look, we're up against a real winner, the 72 stroke. It's been a champion engine for a long time. It still is. So, hey, let's look at our new technology four stroke and we'll see what the results are going to be. All right, mate. I noticed you've got all your gadgets down there, all the things with the numbers that turn over. So I'll let you get down there. I'll stay here and we'll run the numbers. Good man, all right, let's get it going. All right, Nick, what I want you to do is uh, we're going to measure in increments of 500 RPM. So we'll start off at idle. We'll go to uh, 1,000 RPM, 1,500 and so on. And we'll measure the speed in kilometres per hour. And that sounds hour. official, Glenn. I like it. This is idle, my man, idle. OK, 1,000 RPM. The rigorous testing yeah. was simply a case of measuring boat speed and fuel flow at 500 RPM intervals to find out just exactly what the two strokes burn per kilometre. Okay, 1500. 1500 RPM. 2000. 2500. Yep. Three thousand. Three and a half. Okay. Three five, give out. kilometres per hour, maximum speed reached. That is awesome. Awesome. All right, we have done our fuel uh, test, Gibbo, and um, we'll put a graph up and show you all that later. Suffice us to say, it sort of burns about 28 to 30 litres an hour cruising thereabouts. Yep, for sure, yep. Yep. Now, you have got another little gadget there that we want to test, and that is about um, acceleration. Yeah, what we want to see is uh, we've got a device here that measures speed over time. Yep. So we really want to see what the difference is to, to put away that myth that four strokes aren't as quick as two strokes. Yep. So we can test it with the two strokes, then we can do exactly the same test with the four strokes, and then we can compare just how quick or how long it took to wide open throttle. Right. So we've two. just got to go from dead slow to flat out, quick as we can. Let's go. Right Holding on, Gibbo. Yep. That's mashed. Trim is important here. Go, Pat. Go, Pat. Go, Pat. Go, Pat. Yes, Pat. Good, Pat. I'd like to say Hardy and his silly little punt doing this sort of performance test. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Bring it back. And we continue to break records at a new 70.5 kilometers per hour. 70.5. That's awesome. As you can see from the graphs, the sweet spot for this boat is around 4,000 RPM, where she's travelling at just over 40 clicks, using about 33 litres of fuel an hour. That's 1.3 kilometres per litre. When you open her up, she's burning around 55 litres an hour at just over 60 kilometres an hour. All in all, a pretty impressive set of numbers for 16-year-old two-stroke outboards. Wait until she gets the new ones on the back. And so there you go, there's the tail of the tug for the awesome Dominator. Gibbo, thank you very much. No worries at all, pleasure to be here. Time to go and check in with Andrew Hart, who at this point doesn't even have a boat. It's quite extraordinary what Nick is doing, that spew mint grain catamaran makes me want to spew, quite frankly. Chris Pollis, mate, welcome to the show. You're a naval architect. Yeah. And uh, 
you're the next step in my creation of my dream boat. Um, this is what I have come up with on the drawing. This I've put in all these features, all right. doable. They are. I uh, basically will take this from here and tidy it up into yes. Put some formal dimensions on it. Yeah. So you'll use a ruler, will you? Something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, at the moment, is the hull and the hull shape. At the moment, it's a bit flat for my liking. Right. At the moment, it's a 15 degree V, which right. is more suited towards use in a, a river or you know, flat relatively water. flat water. Flat water. So a flatter boat is good because it's going to be stable and you can you know, get up the front and have two people on the same side casting. Yeah, and the other thing with it is, is a uh, relatively flat boat is also more efficient in the water, so you'll use less fuel. Yeah, but what a flat boat will do is when the wind blows, it will pound you to death, basically, and to get uh, through the waves. Yeah, I want this to be more of an all-rounder, I guess. So yeah. I want this to be able to deal with some chop. So can we do anything to beef it up? Yeah, basically, what we'll do to enable it to deal with the chop, and also not to lose too much of the existing characteristics of the boat, yeah. is that we'll deepen the V at the front here, so that the boat uh, is able to pierce the waves a bit better as it comes through deflects the waves rather than just hammering into them. Good, good. So we will uh, we will create more of an all-rounder than you just you sort of that bottom bass boat. We want yeah. a fishing all-rounder. Fascinating uh, discussion with the naval architect, Nick. I was, yes. I was not leaving any stone unturned. I wanted this boat to be spot on. You went deep, didn't you? Oh. Reveled in the detail yeah. and, the, and the whole performance and the numbers and yeah. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, if you're going to build a boat from scratch, probably worth getting it right. Um, <laughs> interestingly, um, with the cat fuel numbers. Yes, um, with the 70 horsepower two strokes. 70 horsepower two strokes. And we were looking at this in the car on the way down here today to go fishing. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, at that 20 knot cruise, burning 30 something, yeah, 30, 33, 34. 33 litres an hour in a five metre boat. Plus oil. Plus oil. Um, is a bit heavy. It's I reckon a bit, in a five metre boat that is too that's heavy. That's too much. Yeah. Um, so it will be interesting. What does this boat burn at 20? Well, like, this thing, you know, knots. 20 litres an hour. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, and this is a six and a half metre boat. Yeah. So, so a um, five metre cat burning 35 litres an hour at cruise is too heavy. Too much, yeah. two strokes. And, you know, 10 years down the track from when this was made, you're probably putting it up with, putting up with it back then, but yeah. nowadays uh, not so much. So uh, will be interesting. Now, next week, uh, I rip the old two strokes off. And what are you up to? Uh, well, I'm building a boat still. Uh, oh, yes. The build process goes on. Uh, we even we cut out sheets of metal and glue them together or something. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, like and subscribe <laughs> if you'd like to see a little bit of metal being glued together. <laughs> Hit the little bell button, then you get a notification when we put that video up, which we will do uh, with precision every week or thereabouts. Good. Cool.